Hi, hello. My name is Beth, and this is Rad Art, a show where I pick someone out of pop culture who creeps me out. Tell you why they creep me out. Then I draw them, and I try a different technique just about every single time. This time's no exception, and ironically, I'm going to be using one of the most childish mediums with one of the most adult subjects. Stephen King. You've been asking for him, so here he is in his full creepy glory. He's actually not that creepy. He's actually like a pretty rad dude. Let me tell you a little bit more about him. A science fiction storytelling master, the legendary author of horror, the literal king of literary suspense. This American writer is prolific in many ways, and his contribution to culture is monumental. Let's get into the life and work of Stephen King. In 1947, Stephen was born to Donald and Nellie King in Portland, Maine. When he was two, his father used the good old going to buy a pack of cigarettes line to up and leave him, his brother, and his mother to fend for themselves, and boy oh boy, it was hard. The family moved around the Midwest for a while before planting roots in Durham, Maine when King was 11. Growing up closer to poverty than comfortable took a toll on Stephen, and he described himself as an angry adolescent in full rebellion, angry at his station in life and what had put him in it. It was around that time that while digging through his attic with his older brother, he came upon the H.P. Lovecraft collection of short stories he remembers as The Lurker in the Shadows, and stated, I knew I had found home when I read that book. He often reflects that writing saved his life many times, and gave him a way to work through the frustrations he felt growing up. He was always writing as a kid, and as a teen, he won a Scholastics Art and Writing Award, but financial success didn't come until much later. In the Vietnam War days, he was found unfit for military service due to high blood pressure, limited vision, flat feet, and punctured eardrums. It paints a picture, doesn't it? That being said, Stephen did meet his wife, Tabitha Spruce, during those years. They fell in love amongst the stacks at the Fogler Library at the University of Maine, and after marrying in 1971, they've remained together through 46 years and three kids. So, what he lacked for in foot art, she made up for in something else, and that's probably not the territory that I should get into. Moving on? It was his wife, Tabby, who helped Stephen gain his big break. In 1973, they were living in a trailer with a toddler and a newborn, her working two shifts at Dunkin' Donuts and him teaching English at a private academy while working summers at an industrial launderer while also moonlighting as a janitor and a gas pump attendant. The two of them barely made ends meet when King had the idea for Carrie in a daydream. He wrote a couple chapters but then scrapped it after letting his self-doubt get to him. How could he write a story from a woman's perspective? That aside, the subject matter alone was dark enough to make anyone want to quit. Tabby ended up fishing the pages out of the trash and encouraged him to continue, helping him write by sharing her own female perspective. All at once in 1977, Carrie made him $200,000, and not only was his career finally taking off, but he was able to buy his wife an engagement ring after six years of marriage. So I want to talk about making things and what it takes to make them. We have this image in our heads that only through intense trauma can we make good art. Comedians are only funny because they're depressed, right? Artists are only imaginative because of their drug abuse, right? So someone like Stephen King must be disturbed. I mean, here's a man who has written in detail a scene that involves Henry, a bully in the book It, carving his name into the fat of another kid's stomach. And in another book, in Misery, he graphically describes how the psychotic Annie Wilkes first uses a hammer to crush and then an axe to completely chop off the foot of writer Paul Sheldon. Well, I have news for you. He's not disturbed. Stephen laughs when he's asked what screwed him up, and he has no memory of anything screwing him up. He's literally a well-adjusted family man living in Maine. He says he's built to give readers satisfaction, and as someone who is also lacking a life event to screw me up, I'm all for a creative path that uses audience satisfaction as a motivator. Speaking of success, King is the recipient of an astonishing number of awards, such as the Bram Stoker Award, World Fantasy Award, British Fantasy Society Award, he has the Medal for Distinguished Contribution to American Letters, and in 2015 was awarded the National Medal of Arts from the United States National Endowment of the Arts for his contribution to literature. Speaking of that contribution, he's published nearly 200 short stories and more than 350 million copies of his 54 published novels have been sold to this date. At the end of the day, though, when asked, how do you measure your success, King replies, I measure it by how interested I still am in what I do and how committed I am to doing it. Success to King is the continued delight in bringing good stories to his readers, and for a man who can get very, very dark, to have such a lovely motivation makes me smile. Like this video if you like it, subscribe to Snarled if you haven't already. Check down in the description, guess what's down there? Yeah, you're, yeah, merch. 
There's merch, there's me, I've got a YouTube channel, a Twitch channel, all the links are there. While you're down there, leave me a comment with who you want me to draw for the next red art. And guys, I got a ring light, can you tell?